So in a supermassive black hole world, uh, <coughs> the ones that we have the most success at observing are the ones that have gas flowing in to grow the black hole. That gas that flows in gets really, really, really hot, and as it's um, heated up, it emits a lot of light. And so we have the opportunity to observe that light from the gas that's flowing in that sits outside the event horizon. So when you have that gas flowing in, we call that black hole active because it's actively growing its mass. That black hole typically, in the ones that we've been able to find, sit in the centers of galaxies, and so they are in the galactic nucleus. So when you take those two things, you put them together, you have an active nucleus. And in general, they live in galaxies. So it's an active galactic nucleus. So AGN is an active galactic nucleus. And all that means is that it's a growing supermassive black hole that sits at the heart of a massive galaxy. Um, so that's the most big, broad, generic term. Any black hole that is actively growing and is sitting in the center of a galaxy is called an active galactic nucleus. Then you have a lot of other terminology. So quasar is the brightest example of an active galactic nucleus. So it still belongs to the class of active galactic nuclei, or AGN, but it's the really high luminosity subset of those objects. And quasar actually comes out of some really interesting historical terminology. Originally, when people found these growing supermassive black holes, they didn't know what they were. They were at really high distances, and so we couldn't see any features in their image. They just looked like a point source. And people thought, well, they look like stars, but they kind of don't look like stars. And so they started calling them quasi-stellar objects. And then that morphed into some other terms that are kind of like QSO. So QSO is a quasi-stellar object. And then people started to see these same objects at radio wavelengths and a whole other suite of terminology built up around their radio properties, whether they could throw out these really bright jets that we some see with some um, very luminous black holes, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the two basic categories are active galactic nuclei that describe all growing supermassive black holes and quasars, which are the brightest, most luminous subset of those growing black holes.